Greetings and welcome everyone. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games. This is the first part for the turn-based RPG tutorial series using Game Maker Studio. In this part, we are going to be importing sprites, creating objects and rooms, and using a tile set. If you've done all that before, then I would encourage you to go ahead and move on to the next part, and you can just see exactly what we've done. We're not going to get into any coding here or anything like that. This is just going to be setting everything up so that in the next part we can really start digging into how this works. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to need several sprites and we're going to make a group right off the bat here and call it Sarah. Groups are fantastic for organizing things which is really what we want to do. So we're going to import sprites and I've got a sprite sheet that I will link into the description below so you can access it and it is Sarah uh, who's a open game art character and she's awesome. Uh, I would rec highly recommend Open Game Art if you have not heard of them. They're, they're a fantastic resource. Uh, so we're going to do nine images and nine per row. This is what a sprite sheet looks like, kind of spread out this time. And it's going to be 64 by 64 pixels with a horizontal separation of 64. So you can see here we've got our boxes and we're going to click OK. And now we've got nine boxes that are her walking animation, which is, which is great. And we're going to click Transform and Trim because this is actually going to be the mask that we'll be using uh, to check when she runs into things. So we want that to be kind of right around here. And we're going to name it SPR Sarah Walk Up. So we want to be as descriptive with these names as we can, but not too terribly long. And we can actually click Control I and o open it up once more, make it go by a little bit faster, click OK, trim. SPR Sarah walk left. And we're going to do this for the next two walking animations and then one of her firing a bow for while she's in battle. Again, control I, and then you can open it up if it's the same file. Makes it a little bit faster. Control Alt P for trim size and center. And we need one more. It's going to be at the very bottom here. And it's going to be 13 images and 13 in one row. So just go ahead and change that. And then you can click OK. Trim it down. Center. And we're going to name this one SPR Sarah Shoot Right. Great, now we've got those in. Let's create one more group and name it Enemy. And we're gonna add in one more sprite. And this time we're actually going to uh, just add from strip. It's just gonna be one character. And I'm gonna go into my enemies that I've got here. And you can remove the background if they have a background. And so this is gonna be 64 by 64. I'm just gonna be one image. And here is the ninja. Let's pull out this guy. Ooh, right there, I think. Perfect. Trim him down. Center. And we're going to name him SPR Ninja. Okay, there's the sprites we need. Next, we're going to need a specific background. So we're going to uh, go and load up a background. And again, I will link everything into the description so you can download and follow along exactly. This is another resource from Open Game Art, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to click on Use as Tile Set. And then you can see here we can now decorate our room with specific uh, parts of this background. And we're going to say the tile width is 32 by 32, which is exactly how this is laid out. So it's fantastic. Uh, we're going to name it BG. We're just going to say Tile Set because we only have one in here. Let's go ahead and go into rooms, and we're going to make uh, two rooms. The first one is going to be named Room Start. It's going to be at 60 frames per second, and this room is going to be persistent, so just remember that. And then click check mark, and we need one more room. This one's also going to be at 60 frames, but it will not be persistent. We're going to name this Room Battle. Uh, Let's go ahead and change the size as well. Let's change it up to 1280 by 720. Give it kind of like a widescreen look. Just because I think it looks kind of cool. And especially for the battle, I think it looks a lot better that way. 
Now, we're going to make a few objects. Uh, first thing we're going to do is create a group, though. We're going to name this group Parents. And we are going to create several parents here, which I will explain why and how exactly they work. But they are super important for making your game run smoothly and having a lot less code than, than would be necessary if you weren't using parents. So we're going to say object char parent. This will be for like the characters. Um, it'll be visible, but that that's really all for now. Create another one. We're going to say object enemy parent. Okay, great. I'm going to create another object, and this one we're going to name Sarah. We'll assign it the sprite, uh, walk down just so that she's facing the player. And she needs to be solid and persistent. And go in for parent, go and select that, and then click on char parent. We want to make sure she has that. We'll make one more group, name it enemies. And we're going to give ninja an object. We'll give him a sprite. We're going to make him solid. And for a parent, he will have enemy parent, which is great. OK, one more group. <laughs> uh, going to call this system. And we're going to make OBJ fade, which is going to be persistent. And that's really all you need to do for that. Oh, no, take it back. You need to give it a depth of a really big number, like a negative 100,000 or something. Give it, create another object, OBJ. We're going to call this one Battle Controller. And this one's going to be responsible for uh, while we're in battle for menus, attack, damage, stuff like that. It's not going to have a sprite, but it is going to be persistent. And that will be that. And the last object that we are going to need is going to be what we're going to call like a, it's called a Stat Keeper. You can name it really whatever you want. Um, we'll get into what that does eventually as well. So. And just because Sarah looks very lonely without a group, we'll create a group for her and place her in it. Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and decorate our rooms real quick, just so that they don't look really, really bland. So we can go into Tiles, which normally starts on, actually, and then click on right down here. It says Undefined, what tile set we're using. And let's click that one that we imported. And if you imported it correctly, you should see it show up here. And now we've got a map that we can work on. So let's go ahead and use this grass because it actually looks pretty good. Uh, we've got one layer here, which is fine. And we're going to hold down shift and then click. And you can see that we just start painting the room. And this can take just a little while. So if you want, you can pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and just create this whole room, cover it in green, and then I will see you on the other side. All right, we have a decorated room. So we're going to throw in just a few more decorations to make it look so not boring. Uh, I would recommend a third-party editor once you start doing re like bigger rooms, stuff like that, just because Game Makers is not that great. But it works for what we want to do. Let's add in another layer over here. We're just going to give it a depth of one. And now everything we put is actually going to be overlaid on the grass, which is what we need, because we're going to add in a tree here. And we don't want it to be underneath the grass. We want it to be over it. The cool thing is that if it has a transparent background like it should, it, it still shows the grass in areas, which is really nice. Uh, let's go ahead and place in like a tree stump over here. Place in a few flowers. You just select it on the left, and then you just place them in there. I'm not a level designer by any means. That is not my job. But it can be fun to experiment to try to make something look kind of pretty, you know. Or, you know, maybe you don't enjoy that at all. Which, if that's the case, then it doesn't matter because the level can be someone else's job and programming can be yours, which is great. Okay, almost done here. Cool. Now we've got that. Uh, let's go ahead and... Okay, so we made two rooms, and I know that. That's great. And I, we'll be using them, but for sake of quickness, let's go ahead and duplicate this room right here. And you see it comes out the exact same, which is great. We're in tiles automatically. Let's go ahead and go to layer one and actually delete that layer. And then come over here and delete room battle. And now, you probably already figured it out, 
Let's rename this room battle. That way we've already got a decorated room. It's a lot easier that way. Okay, that will be it for this tutorial. We have set up our rooms, we've created our objects and imported our sprites, which is awesome. In the next part, we are going to look at uh, setting up the foundation for how objects are gonna interact with each other. We're gonna get Sarah moving, we're gonna place those enemies in the in the field and we're going to look at how to make them work within each other and then by the end of all this you're going to have a turn-based rpg which is going to be awesome so i wish you guys the best of luck and fun in your game making uh, if this was helpful please like or subscribe or leave me a comment i always love to hear from you guys if you have an idea for a tutorial please leave that in the comments below or email me and i will make that happen so until next time guys i'll see you later